Hello everyone, this is me again, your teacher Russell. In this video, what we're going to study about is the story of the ancient mother. If this is a part of my lesson for my grade 8 students, and I hope that some of you will also enjoy this as much as I did. So in this story, we have three important characters. We have two protagonists and the other one is, of course, the antagonist. The two protagonists are the aged mother, which is the main character of the story, and also her son, which is the poor farmer. And for the antagonist, we have the bad emperor. In this story, the bad emperor was described as a despotic leader. Let me read to you the story of the aged mother. Long, long ago, there lived at the foot of the mountain a poor farmer and his aged mother, the widowed mother. They owned a bit of land which supplied them with food and they were humble, peaceful, and happy. This land was governed by a despotic leader. He was a warrior. He had a great and cowardly shrinking from his failing health. And because he's getting old, this caused him to send a very cruel proclamation. And what is this proclamation? He ordered that all the aged people be killed in the entire province and this was a very strict order that everyone has to follow and so when the poor farmer heard about it his heart was filled with so much sorrow but no one ever thought about disobeying the despotic leader it was a mandate so with many deep sighs and hopeless eyes, the poor farmer has to follow the order of the king. When his day's work was ended, he took a quantity of unwhitened rice, which was the principal food for the poor, and he cooked it, he dried it, and he tied it in a square cloth, which he swung in a bundle around his neck. What will he do? He will bring his mother on the top of the mountain so he can abandon her. And that is the modest kind of death that he can offer for his mother. Then he lifted his mother on his back and started climbing the highest peak of the mountain. The road was very long and steep. So he went climbing blindly in the bare summit of what is known as Obatsuyama Mountain. The eyes of the old mother is so weary and dim, but she did something very important. Because of her love for his son, she stretched forth her hand and snapping the twigs from brushes as they passed. She quietly dropped a handful every few steps so that as they climbed, the narrow path behind them was dotted at frequent intervals with tiny piles of twigs. At last, they reached the top of the mountain. Weary and heart sick, the poor farmer gently released his burden and silently prepared a place of comfort for his beloved mother. Gathering fallen pine needles, he made a soft cushion and tenderly lifted his old mother onto it. He wrapped his mother with a coat and with tearful eyes and aching heart, he said farewell to his mother. The trembling mother's voice was full of unselfish love as she gave her last word. 
Let not thine eyes be blinded, my son, she said. The mountain road is full of dangers. Look carefully and follow the path which holds the pile of twigs. They will guide you to the scratch and sold by the work of love. His heart broke with it, and bowing to the ground, he cried aloud, Oh, honorable mother, your kindness breaks my heart. I will not leave you. Together, we will follow the path of twigs, and together, we will die. This is a really sad story. Once more, he shouldered his mother, and they went down the path through the shadows of the moonlight to the little hut in the valley. Beneath the kitchen floor was a walled closet for food, which was covered and hidden from view. So he hid his mother there, and he supplied her with food and everything she needed continually watching and fearing she would be discovered. Time passed and he was beginning to feel safe when again the governor sent forth heralds bearing an unreasonable order, seemingly as boast of his power. His demand was that his subjects should present him with a rope of ashes. The entire province trembled with dread. The order must be obeyed. Yet, who in all shining could make a rope of ashes? One night, in great distress, the son whispered the news to his hidden mother. Wait, she said. I will think, I will think. On the second day, she told him what to do. Make rope of twisted straw, she said. Then stretch it upon a row of flat stones and burn it on a windless night. He called the people together and did as she said. And when the blaze died down, there upon the stones with every twist and fiber showing perfectly lay a rope of ashes. The governor was pleased at a wit of the youth and praised greatly, but he demanded to know where he obtained his wisdom. Alas, alas, cried the farmer, the story must be told, and with deep bows he related his story. The governor listened and then meditated in silence. Finally, he lifted his head. Shining needs more than the strength of the youth, he said gravely. Ah, that I should have forgotten the well-known saying, With a crown of snow, there cometh wisdom. He said, he said, That very hour, the cruel law was abolished, and custom drifted into as far as past that only legends remain. See, this is a very beautiful story. And I hope you learned something from this. So what is this story all about? This is about a love of a mother for her son and also a love of a son for his mother. Another thing, we should always respect the wisdom that these Asian people have. We might think that they're old, we might think that they're useless because they can even barely help us with anything, but they have a great source of wisdom that everyone should know. And I hope you really enjoyed this talk.